Hello, this is Tell Me More. I'm April Beaver. I'm the Director of Digital Ministries here at First Reformed Church, and I'm here with Pastor Mark, who on Sunday, he did the concluding message for the Monday Morning Missionaries series. And this was all about salt and light Correct. and uh, helping us be a witness right. to other people. Right. So Pastor Mark, what did you not get to say on Sunday morning that you wish you had time right. for? Right, well, well, you know, the emphasis was meant to be on uh, students mm -hmm. being the salt and light as they go into school, uh, sermon titled Jesus in My Backpack. And, yeah. uh, and and that's hard because, you know, students are from preschool age all the way through graduate school yes. uh, of what, what that means. And Jesus gives us, you know, a really powerful um, uh, image and uh, even challenge of, of, of these specific words that says, you are the salt of the earth and you are, are the light uh, of the world. And those things are not meant to be hidden or, or put away, but you're to go to school as the salt of the earth. You're to go to school as the light of the world. And so uh, I think those are just very important and, and very poignant things that we, we look at. And what I, what I didn't say is that, um, is, is, you know, it's meant for all of us, you know, mm -hmm. um, not just students taking Jesus to school with them, but it's for all of us of how, how we live our life. And, and we've heard that over and over again about the Monday morning missionaries where there is no really separation between work right. and church. Right. It's, it's who you are. Now, how you maybe live that out at your workplace, maybe you can't say the name of Jesus, you know, <laughs> right. a lot. Um, maybe you can, but at the same time, be, you can be a salt person that mm -hmm. that's good, mm -hmm. a salt filled person and, or a light filled person that brings light into places and doesn't bring darkness into that. So what I didn't get to say though, is the Bible is full of light analogies yes. and, and references to that one being, um, like Psalm 119, 105 that says, you know, your word is a, a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. And that God in his word, in his heart, is so directive mm -hmm. for us right. uh, of giving us instruction and how to live. And like his word is is like a double-edged sword. You know, it, it separates joint and marrow and and it, it impacts our soul. It's living and it's active yeah, that we're really meant to engage that all the time and not yeah. just sometimes, but, but really, really all the time. Uh, another part that I didn't read... Uh, into is, is from for John, John 1. It says, you know, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Mm -hmm. Talking about Jesus and him, yep. him being born and, and that powerful light. Um, I think what's kind of even confusing for me is when we hear those I am statements of Jesus saying, mm -hmm. I am the light of the world, um, which he says um, later in his gospels. But here yeah. he's saying, you are, are the light of the world. And so he's really sure. welcoming us and in, in asking us to join him yes. in the ministry work, yes. you know, that that's taking place. Um, and again, those things that aren't meant to be separate, but, but really coming together. Um, another thing I didn't say with the, everybody that's called to this mm -hmm. and, and this goes with the inviting element or application to be an inviter is to not give up you're going to have someone that says, thanks, but no. Right. Or maybe we'll say, yeah, I'll think about it. Or yeah, I'll see once. And then they never show mm -hmm. up. And then you can feel a failure. And that's what the devil would want us to do is like the work that we're trying to do is, is not making a difference. No one yeah. likes you. No one wants to come to church with you. No one wants to listen, you know, to what you have to say. And I think that's a, uh, um, a thing that the devil really wants us to be like, mm -hmm. to be like, I'm just not going to invite anybody. Yeah. Instead, you know, it's something that we pray about and we give over to the Holy Spirit and we act in obedience and let it happen. And what happens from there, you never know. Um, that was something that, that I was told here, an invitation that was extended over a year ago. Mm. The person said, I decided to come because this person said, oh, you should come to, to First Church. And it took a year for it them to come. It took a year for them mm. to show up, but they still remembered the person that said, you know, you should come. And then they yes. did. That's yeah. a good encouragement yeah. that 
you're right. We shouldn't give up. Yeah. And just when things look like it's not working or it looks bleak, that doesn't mean that God's not working on somebody else's heart. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we had a question come in. Salt here in this in this passage means something good. We mm-hmm. want to be salty. But right now, if we were just to go out and talk about a salty person, it's a mm-hmm. negative connotation. Right. So talk a little bit about the difference between the right. good salty and right. the bad salty. Yeah, you know, Jesus is calling us here to be that preservative. Um, he's calling us to bring out the best, that flavor enhancer, um, mm-hmm. with that in mind, um, that we're going to bring goodness mm-hmm. to things. Like you said, in our culture, if we would say, hey, don't be so salty with me, mm-hmm. It means you're you're being kind of rude and uh, rough. And rough. You're maybe telling the truth, but not in love. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe pointing out faults, mm-hmm. you know, of the other person. Um, you know, a salty person maybe would not afraid to ruffle the feathers of someone and and then just simply walk away. Right. Um, so I, I think there's something really important there that we're not too salty of a Christian, um, but that we're just enough but doesn't, it shares life with them and says, I'm not going to abandon you. I think a salty mm-hmm. person says it, blasts it, and walks away uh-huh. and doesn't care sure. um, what might happen. What Jesus is talking here is like, you're consistent, you're with them, you say things in love and not, uh, not looking to just hurt people um, and tell the truth, right. you know, that, that sort of yeah. thing. So. Yeah. That's yeah. great. And then we had another question mm-hmm. that uh, sometimes it's hard to feel like you can be light to the world when mm. you are in a dark place mm. yourself. How mm-hmm. how do we do that? How right. be, how do we kind of salt and light when it doesn't feel like we are uh, we are worthy or able right. to be salt right. and light? Yeah, th- that's that's a good question, and that's that's I recognize where some days just aren't that bright. Um, and you can feel like you're kind of caught up in this darkness. And I feel it's part of that, just giving yourself over to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to shine into your light, mm-hmm. your life, and and to let God's light shine into those places. It also, I think, means um, maybe sharing that with someone, a trusted friend, uh, sure. a counselor, a therapist, a, a pastor, and saying, you know, I'm I'm just not feeling it right now, and it's it's hard for me. I'm not sensing, you know, God's presence with me. And, and you know, my advice to that person would be, what are what are you doing to immerse yourself into light situations yeah. that you're going to bring that you're going to see the light, you know, that that's happening. God's word is is one of those things. Is there some specific passages that you? need to, to read and, and look over? Is there some people you need to spend some intentional time with uh, as well with that? So I think another part of that is thinking about um, a letting God's light shine directionally into your life. Mm, um, yeah. And that that's another question that might come up is like, how do I know when there's some dark places in my own life? Um, Sometimes it has to be pointed out by another person. Again, a trusted per- friend, a trusted individual, but God's light can shine specifically. It's kind of that spotlight yeah. that shines into your light. So you're like, I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better dad. How can I be a better employee? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe it's the Holy Spirit convicting you you know, of that, that light that shines into that place, not as an interrogation lamp, you know, like with in- sure. investigators saying, ah, what did you do? Uh, but yeah. more importantly of like, this is an area, and I'm going to help you work through it. Yeah, is revealing what, what the light. Holy Spirit mm-hmm. leads us to do that. So, yeah, you know, another great. question that came after the service, and maybe it wasn't so much questions, but it was advice of why my experiments didn't work, <laughs> or my one experience that didn't work. The right. other one did, and yeah. so we celebrate that. But sure. uh, yep. um, my ice was not cold enough, friends. So I'll tell you, I tell everybody <laughs> that my ice wasn't cold enough and it didn't have enough time to get cold. It maybe wasn't uh, that way. And so remind me what that second experiment yeah, so that was. Exper- second experiment was meant to be um, the, the power of invitation mm. in that when you put a string in ice and, and it gets wet from the ice melting and you add salt, it gets colder and then 
all the ice cubes kind of attached to the string. And so it comes out as a string of ice cubes uh, yes. going together. Whereas when you don't add the salt, you put this, the string in and you can just pull it out and, and nothing no sticks ice. to it. Right. It worked in the kitchen <laughs> um, before because my ice had come right out of the freezer and uh, I had it up on stage for a good hour yep. ahead of time thinking there would be, that would be fine, but <laughs> uh, the coolers not wasn't cold enough, and the stage lights are a little hot, yes. and uh, and therefore it didn't work. But well, uh, it was a good try. It good was attempt. yeah. Thank you, and and I think the point got across. You know that that would have been a good thing for me to say. Don't give up. Yeah. You know, on being an inviter, and that's why I said what I said uh, earlier with that. Yeah, that's great. So one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are doing these things and becoming salt and light to the world, it's really easy for us to um, make it all about us, right. make it feel like we are doing these great things for God. How do mm. we change our focus right, so right. that we can make sure it's not mm. about us and mm. our self-righteousness? You know, again, I think if we get caught up into that of worrying about what people are going to say, what people are going to think, that they're all about themselves. Again, that's the devil trying to stop you from doing something good. Yeah. But starting from your heart to saying, God, I want to care for people. I want to help people. And when we do it genuinely, we'll do so always pointing others to Jesus and not about ourselves. And, it, and if someone praises you or says, thank you for that, receive that and say, you're, you're very welcome. I'm just trying to live out a faithful life to my heavenly father and the, follow the words, what, what Jesus has set, called us to do. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Thank you. But we're always pointing to Jesus and not to ourselves and saying, right. Oh, you're so very welcome and you're kind, but in it, you know, things like that um, yeah. are important that we allow ourselves to be risk takers mm -hmm. for good. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe sometimes we overthink it, and we should just maybe act. I like that, yeah. that we should act and not overthink it. I have right. a tendency to overthink. Mm -hmm. and uh, But the Holy Spirit gives us boldness. Right. And he also lets our the light of mm -hmm. Christ shine through us. Right. And so we can trust that he's going to lead us yeah. to the people that he needs to lead us yeah. to. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You got it. Awesome. Good. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Mark. This You're was a welcome. great series of trying yeah. to help us know how how to bring God with us along yeah. all week long. Amen. Amen. Thanks, April.